Before the Lenten season begins, various parts of the Catholic world will indulge in festivities that have come to be known as Carnival. The word derives from the Latin carnivarium, meaning the removal of meat. The French celebration of Mardi Gras, or Fat Tuesday, is the culmination of carnival when meat and other foods forbidden during the severe fast and abstinence of Ash Wednesday are eagerly consumed. Sometimes the revelry and the masquerades devolve into the ancient debaucheries associated with the pagan observances of springtime and the vernal equinox. So not without reason did the Jesuits enthusiastically promote the 40 hours devotion starting in the 16th century. It was to serve in part as expiation for the many sins committed during Carnival. And that is the subject of this painting by Peter Bruegel the Elder. The fight between Carnival and Lent is his way of depicting the contrast between Lenten virtue and Carnival vice on a canvas crowded with active figures confined within the small square of a Flemish village. The painting can be divided into two parts, with the celebrants of Carnival relegated to the left and the Lenten observance depicted on the right. Both seasons come into direct conflict in the comical joust of two allegorical figures presented in the foreground of the painting. A drunken fat man, seated on a barrel, personifies Carnival. He balances a chicken pot pie on his head, while his right hand brandishes a heavily laden spit in the direction of his adversary. Lent is depicted as a dour and emaciated woman, seated on a rickety chair. She wears a discarded basket as her helmet, and for her weapon she has chosen a baker's shovel decorated with two dried fish. Her entourage carry pretzels, a Lenten snack created only of flour, salt, and water, and shaped in the form of arms crossed in prayer. Food is not the only contrast made between Carnival and Lent. Human actions follow suit. Behind the allegorical figure of Lent, people are genuinely concerned about the less fortunate. They are shown giving alms to the poor and to the crippled. They struggle to bury the dead. Nuns walk in procession, clutching both their prayer books and their rosaries, while children keep their tops spinning with the aid of little whips. Even this innocuous game has moral significance, implying that, to avoid downfall, an occasional whipping or chastisement is necessary. By contrast, behind the bloated figure of Carnival, the revelers sing and dance. They gamble and perform before a makeshift tent. A ribald theatrical production is in process called The Dirty Bride. They engage in lovemaking and gorge themselves with food and drink, while totally ignoring the handicapped and the poor in their midst. Juxtaposed to the moral lesson of the spinning tops, a group of adults play a less edifying game of their own as they wastefully throw pots into the air and watch them smash on the ground. Significantly, the center of life on the carnival side of the painting is the swelling tavern, where reserved kegs are stationed at the entrance and pranksters mischievously peer out of second-story windows. By comparison, the Lenten side is dominated by the portals of a Gothic church, where people kneel to pray and sinners are gently shriven. Into the center of this milieu walk two strangers, probably husband and wife, carrying what few possessions they own on their backs. They are seen from behind and are led into the town square by a fool. In his harlequin dress, this colorful guide attempts to draw them toward the easy pleasures found on the carnival side of the painting. But the guarded embrace the husband gives his wife would imply that their destination lies elsewhere. Their heads turn in fascination toward the earthly delights displayed in the carnival townscape, but their footsteps would seem to be directed towards the spiritual fortress of the church, where virtue is nurtured. In Bruegel's time, the grotesque excess of carnival was known as the devil's work, and through artistic caricature, the artist has managed to mock such excess. But it is the middle path taken by this couple in this painting 
that provides the viewer with food for thought. For this townscape can be seen as a microcosm of life itself and the moral choices one must make on the journey through it. The seasons wax and wane, and as they come and go, they are filled with endless opportunities to temper or tempt the wandering soul.